Hi, this is Shadi and today we're gonna be discussing the difference and or how judo evolved from its old predecessor jujitsu. Um, there's a lot of principles that were added, there's a lot of techniques and there's a lot of kata, so uh, the principles uh, radically change the expression of the art and in my opinion I would argue this is something incredibly new, the notion, the philosophy. Uh, a lot of people say this is just old jujitsu repackaged, but the stuff, the genuine, like the genuine, unique stuff that were added, I would argue, are incredibly uh, new and made the art ten times more efficient. Uh, why? A while back, I talked about judo versus jujitsu. This is part two. I talked about mainly the structure, the ranking system, but today I'm gonna go more into details uh, and talk about why it is so incredibly unique from the old uh, jujitsu so and come up with a conclusion comparing this to bjj and uh, some of its new aspects just to talk about it so uh, the new things are the following so let's first talk about randori you see randori uh, was obviously not an invention of jigoro kano but uh its emphasis was far less back in the old days for, you know, context reasons. For example, uh, they were all still after the tradition that came from before the Edo period, before the civil rest, where there was civil unrest and inner turmoil. So a lot of these trainings were based on kata and weapons and self-defense. And of course, there is randori, but they were fixated far more on that the weapons you have koryus that are just based on weapons kenjutsu tanto jutsu kiu jutsu um and of course they they have their self defense kata but uh, randori became the staple of judo you have drills you have kata and the big one is randori if you read all throughout uh, Jigoro Kano's young life, you would see that uh, whenever he had the green light to start teaching uh, jujitsu to, to the students, if his uh, uh, master was ill or not present, he would teach mainly drills and then follow it with long sessions of randori. Um, this became a staple in many martial arts today, based on the stuff that Kano himself implemented. Now, not saying this is an invention, but uh, something uh, that evolved the art tremendously. The next one, it, within Randori, you have Kuzushi. Kuzushi, this is based on Kano's experience with his instructors. Now, did he himself invent it 100%? I'm not sure, but it is uh, something that Kano himself thought of. So, before that, you had the old stance, which is Jigotai. Uh, you see it here in front of you in um, the Nage no Kata, which is a reflection of old Koryu techniques. And with Judo, uh, adding Jiu-Jitsu, they had to go to Shizentai, which is an upright, the natural posture. So uh, th there came Kuzushi. You have two types of Kuzushi. The first one with called Hapo no Kuzushi, unbalancing to eight directions. And the second one is Hando no kuzushi which is actually unbalancing by reaction for example fainting with like a kusoto or a kochi etc uh, making the opponent really stand on their toes and kneeling forward to finish with serenage or uchimata or whatever that can be considered as kuzushi rather than just lifting up and taking to one of the eight directions so renroku like combinations and faintings that's a type of kuzushi so like I said, in Randori, you had two things that were implemented. The first one being Shizen Hontai, which is the upright natural posture, rather than its old Jigotai. And uh, of course, Kuzushi. Kuzushi is crucial. Without these two, uh, the expre imagine Judo without these two, and they were still doing Jigotai. It would look incredibly less efficient and far more static and... Uh, not as agile and as explosive as it is today. Uh, judo is very much known for its explosiveness due to these two principles. So uh, the next one is classification of techniques. You see, uh, this helped judo a lot. First of all, uh, 
separating them to teiwaza, koshiwaza, uh, leg, leg technique, ashiwaza, and sacrifice techniques, temiwaza, uh, really helped uh, judo to become far more uh, clear and far more understandable and far more uh, assimilated. So you can easily get uh, ahead at the art and also giving some techniques names. For example, they would do these uh, techniques without their names or uh, like a very brief uh, definition for them. If you see, for example, the judo techniques, they were uh, they literally describe what you're doing. So it's a great way of understanding them. And also before that, they were a bit like Aikido. We say in Aikido, uh, the first five techniques, Ikkyo, Nikkyo, Sankyo, etc. They have names, but we mostly refer to them as Ikkyo, Nikkyo, Sankyo, which is actually first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. It's not actually the name of the technique. So uh, a Judo went away from that, straight from that, and actually gave them technique, uh, they gave them names. Now they invented a few techniques here or there, like uh, Hanegoshi, uh, Ukigoshi, and uh, many others like uh, Yokogake, but that's not a really big change. A lot of people invent new guards and techniques all the time, but it doesn't change the entire expression of the art and take it to the next level, in my opinion. That's just your little addition to the art, in my opinion. That's not a new art if you know what I'm saying. So the next one is obviously the education. I've talked about this so many times, the three types of education going from Jutsu to Do. You have the physical, mental, and moral education that is crucial to develop yourself and also to help develop others. So we went from the gentle art to gentle way of living. So these principles and philosophies are tools uh, called Sei Ryoku Zenyo, which is best use of energy, mind, and body, and also uh, Jita Kyoe, which is mutual benefit and welfare, uh, which are all like old uh, Chinese concepts, but really implementing them and basing the art around them made the art uh, far more accessible and far more uh, like digestible and also helped it spread far wider like the Junori as well, the principle of soft, yielding, and flexible. I talked about this, uh, like using strength, being flexible, or be using no strength, all of it has its benefits and advantages. And I talked about the use of PEDs, that's another video. So also the next edition is the belt system. Uh, in 1883, it was divided into Q and done before it was just done. Um, and even the Q was became uh, into six uh, degrees or six uh, levels. I did a uh, collaboration with Jiu Jitsu Summit TV on Instagram. Um, if you want to go and watch that, it's not available on my channel. I talked about the history of the uh, the belt system in both Judo and BJJ. You can go watch it on their Instagram. Uh, it's like I said, it's not available on my channel, and also it made it into like a like a school curriculum, prerequisites, exams, etc. Uh, I'm on the fence with this one for, because a lot of people are just very talented and they get ahead far faster than others with their research. For example, a brown belt can be far more talented than a third don that doesn't know their history and also doesn't know the principles and doesn't know a lot of these techniques but because just they have been in the art far longer. So sometimes you could wait really like long years just to get the belt or the rank that you deserve. But nonetheless, this uh, type of uh, examination prevents dojos to be of becoming big dojos and just handing out belts like cookies. So the, the next thing is the equality and openness. Uh, judo before... Uh, or jujitsu before uh, it was really narrow for women a lot of koryus did not allow women judo had its men and women classes um, and women were only uh, allowed to get to fifth dan until fukuda keiko uh, made this change and fought for it she became the only red belt and of course the kodokan could have banned her but no uh, they assimilated her, they welcomed her and in, and this uh, grew and let, allowed the Kodokan to evolve even more. Uh, Jigoro Kano allowed this very easily. So 
And there's also no no more secret teachings and inner students like Uchideshi. You see Aikidokas going years and years or months and becoming Uchideshi, uh, learning these secret teachings as if they're gonna go become too deadly or whatever. I mean, I understand that if it's for an art that's actually combative, but uh, judo does not allow that. Everything is for everyone and everything is out in the open and everything is transparent and that's something I really appreciate. I don't have to waste years and a lot of my resources to go somewhere private just to have some secret teachings. Uh, plus, you can go on so many websites and buy instructionals, so there's no need anymore. The next one is, of course, the preservation of all techniques um, through kata and just uh, taking them from old koryus like Kitoriyu and Tenshin Shinryu and Sumo and putting them in uh, the repertoire of technique of Judo because uh, Jiu Jitsu was on its way out, nobody liked it anymore, uh, it uh, represented backward stuff while Japan was trying to get ahead, but Kano Sensei kept it all. Also the uh, the Judogi, uh, they, they went from the traditional kimono to the Judogi. Um, even when you see uh, uh, like Sadakazu Uyenishi and Yukio Tani wearing it, it, it's not because of Jiu-Jitsu. It's actually because back then Judo became trendy back when they started Jiu-Jitsu. And also their school, the, Han, the Yataro Honda, took a lot from Judo. Like, like Hanegoshi, for example, you see it in their books, their uh, foot sweeps, etc., and their leg locks. So, uh, and of course, the recognition. Uh, all of these helped spread Judo worldwide, but uh, the stuff with Randori is just absolutely amazing. That alone radically changed the art, uh, the expression, etc. Now, finally, the invention of all these kata to preserve these techniques and also uh, it's an invention, it's an addition. They are not found in old koryus. Some of them are, yes, but the vast, vast majority are not. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description for all the names of the kata and their YouTube link for you to watch them if you want to just watch kata. So the first one is Seryoku Zenyo Kokumen Taiku, which is Maximum Efficient National Physical Education. So uh, there's not a lot of YouTube videos on this one, but the Kodokan put a lot, uh, put one very recently. So thank you, Kodokan. The next one is Juno Kata, Forms of Gentleness. The, the third is Nage no Kata, Forms of Throws. Uh, Katame no Kata, Forms of Holding. Uh, Kime no kata, forms of decisiveness, which is self-defense. Uh, these are the official kata existed in Kano's lifetime and he contributed to their inventions. You have also Kashiki no kata, which uh, learned by Kano in the Kitoriyu. Gono no kata, forms of hardness, which is the, uh, the exact opposite of Juno kata. And you have Itsutsu, which is the five symbols. I believe it comes uh, from... Uh, I believe the tension Shinyu Ryu so uh, and also oh by the way Kuzushi you can find it in the Koshiki no Kata just that reminds me but it is far different from the Kuzushi done in Judo so you see the concept existed but the way we are doing it today with the sleeve and the lapel and also creating uh, like reactions it took Kuzushi to a whole new level so this is something incredibly revolutionary. Uh, now there's also katas after Kano, but they're still official Kodokan kata, like the Goshin Jutsu, of course, in the 50s for self-defense, added to Kimeno kata, and Joshi Goshin Ho, which is, fun fact, a self-defense kata for women created in World War II. Uh, it is uh, like basic self-defense skills. Uh, it's two parts. One is solo. The second is uh, two partners. Now, there's also uh, kata developed by Kodokan members, but they're not official kata. Torite no kata, nage waza, ura no kata. You have kata me waza, ura no kata. You have uh, goshin jutsu, mifune's goshin jutsu. Uh, which is a spin-off of the old Goshin Jutsu and you have the non-Kodokan Kata but nonetheless they're, they're very popular like Gonosen no Kata and Nanatsu no Kata so you see the additions, the contributions and what Kano did 
is absolutely amazing. Just if, if you just did the Kuzushi and the uh, Shizen Hontai, that alone radically changes the expression of the art. Uh, but it, it's so much better for self-defense for Randori and also beating uh, all the Koryus that challenge them. So. Uh, Let's talk, for example, uh, you see, these are little stuff, but he didn't invent a new series of techniques, maybe a few, but nonetheless, look at what he did with the art. So I would argue it is a new art with the kata, with the form of expression uh, during Randori, the focus on Randori. Now, when it comes to BJJ, I always said this and I will always keep saying this. Uh, if it's, for example, old uh, jujitsu, like the Hicks and Gracie Gi, jiu-jitsu or the jiu-jitsu you see Kron doing with the gi i would always argue this is judo neiwaza and the stand-up uh the stuff that sunitani and oda did are very much present in their teachings and if not even more they reduced it and also um you have far less a focus on the education and the mutual welfare etc this it's so much based on competition uh, that's why, for example, leg locks are not welcomed uh, at the times of Kano because it doesn't contribute to the welfare of others and also for medical reasons, the surgeries, etc. So uh, you, can, I, you can argue, wait, but what if I break someone's arm with an arm bar, etc. So yes, but uh, it's you can easily heal from an arm bar, uh, for example, than a heel hook or a knee bar. It will just crush your leg. You will be maybe permanently limping even in today's modern medicine. So uh, that's another thing. Now, I do see jujitsu going in uh, like a form of its own, taking off the gi, these schools that do no gi all the time, uh, no takedowns whatsoever, just get in between the legs and do heel hooks. Uh, that's not jujitsu. Like, that's not judo. Obviously, it looks very much different than planet, uh, the no gi, Dana, her stuff. Uh, is it an evolution towards something better not necessarily because i believe for self-defense this is just detrimental and you're not gonna go around heel hooking someone uh and you know zero takedowns you know zero kuzushi none of that uh i believe that when it comes to self-defense this is detrimental even uh John Danaher himself if cognizant of that and he's going off with his feet to floor series for this particular reason in general so uh, like I said uh, what he did was very revolutionary great for self-defense great for competition all way around it and on and off the mats as a to become a better human being so yes Jigoro Kano is a genius and I would argue this is a new art this is not old jiu-jitsu like a lot of people comment but uh, old old school gi bjj i would argue is just judo uh, minus the philosophy and the education part like i said uh, the new stuff with the nogi yes that's that's an evolution of its own not necessarily good for competition reason yes but for self-defense and well-rounded martial artists i would say not so much so if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. Also, I would like to thank the people of Reddit. They're constantly providing resources and being very uh, uh, like courteous in the comments. Not all of them, but a lot of them are very courteous in the comments. I appreciate that and constantly providing sources and links. So thank you, all of you. I'll leave the links in the description for you to check out absolutely everything. Uh, also, consider supporting me on Patreon. And like I said, if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.